Hi there, and welcome to my new course, Develop Your Drawings. Um, so if you're new to my channel, my name's Ed, and uh, I teach art normally. Um, and since lockdown, I've been doing online art classes. So last year I did a course on landscape painting, and um, a month or so ago, I did another drawing course um, called How to Become a Better Artist by Practicing Drawing. So you can find both of those courses on my YouTube channel. Um, if you just find the playlist, um, you should find all the lessons there. So this is a brand new course and uh, it sort of builds on what we covered in my last course, but it will be excellent as a standalone course if you haven't done any drawing before. Um, so it's really about taking um, some of the ideas and developing them through the use of projects and assignments. So the way it's going to work is each week I'm going to do a demonstration and I'm going to do my best to explain some of the ideas and the theory behind why I think um, this demonstration will be a great exercise for you to practice. So then each week you can practice what I've shown at home, um, maybe take the idea further. So all of these assignments could be developed into quite long lasting projects. So they're really just ways to get your ideas going. Um, but yeah, you can practice each one at home and then on Thursday, you can send me in any work that you do. And uh, on Friday, what I'll do is I'll upload a video and give you some feedback. OK, depending on how many people send work in, um, I'll try and get through as many people as possible. But looking at other people, seeing how other people are approaching each of the assignments, I think is a really useful way to learn. Um, I find in my classes, although I help my students quite a lot, they get a great value from um, seeing other students work and uh, seeing other people, you know, at a similar level, um, sort of battling with the problems that they're working on. Anyway, so my last course was really um, specifically about drawing and the um, some of the ideas behind drawing. Um, and in this um, course, what I'm hoping to do is introduce a bit more color. Um, so we're going to do a few color exercises and a few drawing exercises. OK, um, now you don't have to worry too much about materials. Um, I have put a link below um, with some of my materials that I suggest that I like to work with. Um, but you don't need to go out and buy yourself a massive set of watercolors. If you have a little watercolor set, that will be fine for what we're going to be doing. Um, obviously, if you want to start building up your watercolor set, um, then, you know, by all means, um, you know, have a look at what I've suggested. You might get some ideas there. I do think for watercolors, though, getting good paper really does make a world of difference. So I've got some um, Sanders Waterford paper um, that I'm going to be using, and I really recommend that. You can buy that on Amazon. Again, the link's below. Um, just as long as you've got nice, good paper, you'll get much better results, and that's going to um, help you. You know, you're not going to become dispirited too early. Um, in my art classes, normally I used to encourage my students really just to focus on oils and acrylics because I found that watercolors could be probably the hardest medium for people, um, especially if you haven't got that grounding in the ideas of value and simplifying and all these things. Simplification becomes much more important when it comes to watercolors. But we're going to cover some exercises that will hopefully um, sort of get you in the mood for that. So let's make a start. This week we're going to be looking at working with watercolors and we're going to be looking at how to simplify um, your reference material uh, to make great subjects to explore watercolors. Um, and we're going to be looking at an exercise called mingling. Um, mingling is to do with where you take colors and you drop them into each other and it gives you really interesting effects. And I'm hoping um, by the framework I give you with the assignment, you're going to be able to go off and just sort of play with this idea over the week and just see what you come up with. OK, so look forward to seeing how you get on over the course. You can always email me, contact me, leave messages below. Always much appreciated. If you are new to the channel, then please remember to uh, like and subscribe. It really helps me sort of build, um, build the channel and reach a wider audience. Anyway, so let's make a start. So I've just made this short video showing you the materials I'm going to be using today for this demonstration. As I say, this is the Sanders Waterford paper, which I really recommend. Um, I don't need to stretch it for the exercises I'm doing. And this, this is my uh, Pelican uh, watercolour set. 
Um, I saw one of my students using this at Otley College and I bought a set and I've really enjoyed using them. They're very dense colours for uh, pans, uh, watercolour blocks. And this is just an assortment of brushes. So you can spend a fortune on watercolour brushes, but I've just got a variety there, different sizes, um, some good, some not so good, but they'll, they'll do the job for what we need to do. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be using. Okay, so this first exercise, this is the minglings. So I've got my uh, watercolour paper and I'm just going to start by dividing it up into some spaces. So I think we do three lines horizontally and then what was it another three. So that's just breaking up the page basically. So we don't want to, we're going to be experimenting with different colour combinations really. Now the exercise I borrowed this from used a chicken motif. Um, so you'll see um, that these look ever so slightly like a chicken, some more than others. Um, you can copy that at home if you like. Um, just to help me out with it, I did look at a, um, a weather vane. Just a, a weather vane's great because it's usually just a, um, a cutout of a, in this case, a cockerel. Um, but really what you want for this is you want a a fairly simple shape um, that is going to read as a silhouetted form. Okay, you could use it, you could just do it with an apple or a pear or something like that. Okay, so this is me making a start. So what the exercise involves is, what I'm actually doing is I'm using two brushes. And so what I want you to do is you use one brush, you get one colour um, and you make a start and you do half the, uh, the chicken. And then the other half of the chicken is done with another colour. Uh, using the two brushes helps to keep the colours clean. And then what you're doing is you're just trying to draw these colours side by side and you're allowing them to mingle. Um, now some of the colours will mingle better than others. Um, like that one really sort of flows into the yellow and we actually get a nice green emerge. Um, and I'm just, what I'm doing here is I'm just going through my palette and just trying different combinations. If you had a bit more time than me, you could actually write some notes as to what colours you were using. Uh, other things you need to be aware of is the amount of water on your brush. Okay, um, you don't want too much water to pull at the bottom. Um, also, as the water drains out, it can occasionally desaturate your colour. These are all sort of skills that are really useful to learn with watercolours. So this exercise allows you to practice quite a wide variety of skills um, that will come in useful as you start to use a medium that may not be familiar to some of you. So I'm just trying out different combinations and uh, say the interest here is really just how these colours sit together. One of the things with watercolours is you're trying to get the watercolours to, you're trying to set up the conditions so that the watercolours will do some of the work for you. Um, and if you were using oils to mix gradients, it can take a long time mixing all these intermediary steps. With watercolours though, if you set them up uh, side by side, they will mix sort of fairly independently and create these amazing mixes. So what I really want you to do with this is just to have a play, okay? Pick a simple design and just play with dropping one colour into another. You could use three colours, you know, you could do all sorts, um, but I've just decided to keep it simple. And I quite like this as a nice page. Um, so this is what I want you to do and just try and have a bit of fun with it really. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the mingling to create more um, sort of um, elaborate sort of designs. And what I wanted to show you is this. Um, this is what I want you to do to simplify your reference material. So you've collected some reference, could be a subject you're interested. I've picked some landscape themes and some portrait themes. And this website I found, Pine Tools, it allows you to use something called Threshold. And as you can see, I've just dropped in, I've uploaded my file, and then I'm using Threshold, and then that scale up there is creating a black and white version of my reference material. Now, hopefully this should be straightforward enough for you to use, but if you get stuck, you can always email me. Um, it means you don't need to have Photoshop or any advanced software. You can just go onto this website, drop in your reference, 
And what we're looking for is we're looking for pictures that stand simply as black and white designs. This is going to become really useful for us when we're doing watercolors um, because we can, what we can do is we can apply our mingling theory to simply the black areas and leave the white areas um, as open as blank page. Okay, so here's another reference. Now you see this is uh, from I think Peaky Blinders and um, reference material from films usually has this very strong lighting and as you can see what it does is it creates a nice simple black and white pattern that reads very effectively as a portrait okay so I'm just playing with different levels there but you can play around with it and sort of find a nice balance um, as I say when I talked about tonal values and um, being able to break your um, your subjects down into very simple tones, in this case just black and white or black, white and grey. This is a great skill and very useful going forward with painting or drawing. So this is Clint Eastwood. Again, the strong lighting makes it perfect for this sort of subject. And what we have is we've got a very, a fairly simple arrangement of light shapes and dark shapes. But combined, um, we get this you know, we've basically got our portrait there just in these black and white designs. Um, so if you go through your favourite films, look for scenes where there's strong lighting, you'll find no end of reference where you could use this. But I would say try to keep it so it's relatively simple. You probably won't get this if you use family photographs. Um, you need that strong directional lighting to get this effect. So I'd, I'd encourage you to play around with it. So I say you just drop in your own reference material, you play around with the threshold um, and then you save the image. You can then print that off um, or you can just have it on your tablet or something like that that you can refer to. Now I'm not saying that you need to just work from the black and white but the black and white design will be a great starting place for your watercolours. So I put the link to this website below, so you should be able to find it quite easily and you can just start having a play around with it. I've noticed, I think they have lots of other tools that you find on Photoshop as well. So you might find other things, um, it might be a useful resource if you're looking to edit your, uh, your photos for reference. So again here, it's a nice design. We, I say it still reads, even though it's been simplified. Um, and say this would be great for like lino cuts, etching, printing. You know, when you can get a design and you can see it in these much more simple terms, that's really going to help. Okay, so this is the first one I decided to have a go at. And uh, this was one actually, you, you haven't seen this yet. This is a scene, a Felix Stowe scene. Same idea, applied the threshold and just broke the scene down into a nice, simple black and white arrangement. So I'm using a bit of masking tape there. Um, there's my subject. And I'm just starting to sketch it on. So I'm just using a blue pencil there. And that this is a bit like a contour drawing. I'm just really trying to um, put in that simple black shape. Of course, this is where your drawing practice will come into use, okay? You'll see for the portrait, I use a technique to transfer the, uh, the drawing, but for, for a landscape, um, you know, good observation should be enough to, uh, to get you going. And as you can see from the black and white image already, it's instantly readable, even though it's just two, you know, two tonal values. So now having established the design, um, I'm just going to go back and just use my mingling um, exercise. Now, the mingling exercise, there's lots of different colours you could combine. And I just, um, I picked a complementary arrangement here of blue and orange. Um, so for those of you that come to my classes or have looked at art, you'll know complementary colours um, work really well together. So in this case, orange and blue, and the others are um, red and green and purple and yellow. 
And these colours can be found on the opposite ends of the colour wheel and they tend to work really nicely together. Now the important thing here is um, I'm just basically painting a dark mass, the black shape of my reference material. Where I'm putting in the different colours isn't that important, okay? I'm just having a play with it. I could have done this exercise like five times over, you know, lots of different colours, lots of different arrangements. But what I'm trying to do though is just to vary it and allow that mingling process to, um, you know, to do some of the work for me and create interesting effects. And just to try and keep that rhythm so there's sort of nicely distributed. It's not all, you know, orange here and blue there. So a nice sort of distribution. And as you can see, quite quickly, I've established a, you know, it's it already reads as a Martello Tower. I mean, I think it already reads, but I'll let you decide. Um, and that's with very little detail. Now, what you have to be careful with, um, the paints that I use, as I said, they're very dense, densely coloured for pans, uh, watercolour blocks. Um, when you start using watercolours, if you're a bit sort of timid and you're a bit new to it, what, what people can end up doing is using too much water. If you use too much water to get a painting like this going, you won't create that nice dark shape, okay? So although it's not black, it's colour, it's still a very distinct dark shape as opposed to the white background. So if you start to, I say, dilute your paint, you're not going to have a simplified tonal mass. You'll get basically blue, orange, but on a black and white level, you'll also be getting lights sneaking in there. OK, so you could do a little bit of I'm doing once I've established the shape, I am doing a little bit extra, as you'll see. But the idea really is to let the just the simple shapes do the work for you. Now, as I say, I would consider what I've produced here for all the demos I've done for this week's class. I would say I wouldn't regard them as finished artworks, um, but they're almost like preparatory paintings that could be used for more considered studies if you had the time. Um, but they, you know, they gave me some good ideas and I would happily sort of go back to them, um, spend a bit more time with my silhouette. As I say, the silhouette is doing all the work for you in this case. Now here for watercolour fans, I'm using a little bit of a technique here, which is um, I'm just using the edge of a piece of card and I'm dipping that in the paint just to give me a straight line um, to create a feeling of some of those poles and uh, sort of masts that you get down by the sea there. OK, and there we've got this... Um, this is like down at Felixstowe Ferry and we have this uh, sort of concrete sort of, well, I don't know what it is, it's a bit like a beach, but it actually gives perspective clues and helps to pull our eye. Um, as you can see, they're all pointing towards a vanishing point and bringing our eye into the composition. So I thought quite a, nice, a, a useful thing to bring in. OK, and there we go. So as you can see, quite colourful. So again, this isn't about realistic colour in the same way the chickens weren't about realistic colour. Um, it's just about establishing those tonal values and then also, you know, at the same time, playing around with different colour combinations and seeing what, what effects you like. But yeah, I was I was really pleased with that. I thought it worked quite nicely. OK. So I've got another one for you. Um, so this one you saw, I've actually, um, this I used this reference material um, in my previous online course and I did a charcoal drawing based on it. Um, I quite like the design though. It's got a nice simple design, uh, a path leading um, sort of away from us with a house in the distance. Um, and as you can see, there's a nice, uh, we've got the interesting silhouettes of the trees and then we've also got the path. Now, I'm doing something a little bit different in this one. What I'm doing is these colours that I'm laying in here, these are still my lights, OK? Um, I'm going to let this dry and then treat everything else like I did before, OK? That's just an option for you. Watercolour will dry very pale. 
So um, I can put in that sky and be fairly sure, as long as I paint the rest of it quite densely with paint, that the sky will still read as a light mass. Um, so this is a this is a way you can sort of start to um, build on this as an exercise. I mean, I could have left the sky as white paper, but I think adding a little bit of tone in there made it more interesting. So same idea here. This is again, I was just thinking of a complementary sort of scheme, not really thinking about, you know, realism, um, but just trying to create nice, dense colours and uh, using the mingling to see whether they would just create some nice sort of blending effects. The red colour I've got there is very dense. Um, unfortunately, with the Pelican um, set that I have, the colours, um, it's hard for me to tell you exactly what colour I'm using, but I would just say, you know, play around with your own colours. The principles still apply. Just make sure that your colour is dense enough. That's the thing. Make sure you're getting dark darks. And always remember the watercolours will dry lighter. So you have to make sure you're using plenty of pigment. OK, so you can see, you know, hopefully you can see that the simplicity of the design really lends itself to um, a watercolour painting. OK, it's so easy when you start just to get bogged down in detail and overthink things. But actually, it's this simplified statement. That's what does like 90 percent of the work. Everything else, like the stuff I'm putting on now, is really icing on the cake, little details. OK, so again, I'm doing a few more perspective lines there just to bring the eye in. And uh, again, you know, as I say, I don't think this would be perhaps a finished painting, but it would be, you know, it's got enough, enough interest that I would consider um, developing it into a more considered piece. I'm not sure if those colours work particularly well together. I'm just using my fingernail there just to pull out a few deeds. You see where I've done it on the uh, post. I think that worked really well to push the house back. So there we go. That's my second one. Okay, now I'm going to do the portrait one, but I just wanted to show you this in case you're not familiar with it. So I printed it off, the black and white threshold version, and I've already put some chalk on the back. That's Conte crayon. So you can use this technique um, if you want to do a portrait and you are, you know, pushed for time and the drawing is proving a bit difficult. Um, so you establish the Conte crayon or pencil or graphite on the back of your printout and then you put it on top of the page that you're going to be working on and then you push really hard not too hard to leave a deep groove but hard enough that it will come through with some sort of pen and then you're just outlining the black and white shapes okay now you, I would spend a bit more time on it but as you can see it's come through and it's given me basically a diagram of my light and dark shapes. Um, and as I say, when it comes to doing the portrait, you may find this this is a useful technique, um, you know, to get the ball rolling. So I've done the same thing with this one. I put my masking tape on. So same idea, just going to be using this black and white design um, to play around with colour. So the trick is all the colours are going to be going into what are effectively the dark shapes. OK, so again, the trick here is um, good reference. Um, one thing I've learned a lot over the years of seeing people um, painting is actually good reference will make or break a painting. Um, like in this case, we've got very strong side lighting and it just lends itself. It's a it's a really simple uh, design and yet it reads so well as a face. Um, so this is why you know finding good reference is a bit of an art form in itself. Um, but you know that's why we look to the experts, look to films, adverts, um, famous painters. You know a lot of people have gone before and found the things that work. Um, so the more you can borrow from them, uh, the better. Now, of course, if you if you have someone you don't, you know, if you knew someone you wanted to do a picture of, you could get them to stand beside a window or you could get them in a dark room and shine a lamp in their direction. 
and you could probably set up something very similar uh, with someone you know. Now with this one more so than the others I'm just really taking my time to get these shapes right. Um, I say there's a lot of information in these shapes um, and it's, it would be hard to invent them. I mean it could be done um, but having taken the time to uh, get them on the page I'm just trying to be quite careful about getting those shapes as accurate as possible. But with the rest of it I was just happy to play with the mingling exercise again. Um, in this one I decided to go for a more harmonious, instead of complementary colours, this is more of a harmonious arrangement. Um, so all the colours are in the sort of red, orange, red, orange, yellow sort of side of the colour wheel. I think that's called analogous, analogous colour, when they're all sort of part of the same family there. Now that's uh, a nice brush that I've mentioned this before, that was a brush um, one of my classes gave me a voucher one year for I think maybe it was my 40th birthday <clears throat> and I bought a couple of nice brushes. Um, as I say with watercolours you can end up spending a small fortune on equipment but if you look after it um, it should sort of serve you well. Um, good paper works you know is worth spending money on. Um, one or two nice brushes can really be good. Um, I don't think that's a sable. I think it might be some other mix of um, some other animal. Um, of course, these days I'd probably try and get something uh, a bit more synthetic, I think. But uh, say if you do come across sable brushes, they are probably the best. It's mainly to do with the way they hold the water. Um, you don't have to dip back in so often. Um, Anyway, so I hope you can see, you know, the cut, the mingling is just working really nicely there. So really there's two main takeaway points from this lesson that I want you to work with during the week. Um, I want you to have a go with this mingling and just have fun with it. Um, if you want to be a bit more organised, you could actually start to build up some colour charts, mixing one colour into the other and writing down the names. That can be a very good uh, exercise. And then this process of simplifying your reference material into two tones. Um, that is going to help you whether you're working in oils, watercolours or any other medium. Even if you just stuck to pencil drawing, um, breaking down your subjects into two tones will make your, your graphic statement that much more stronger. And also it's a way of thinking and a way of looking at the world that will feed into, um, you know, all your art. So, I, you know, I think there's a lot to be learned from that. So get onto that website, you know, take your uh, reference material and just play around with it. Print off some of the designs, um, get them onto your page. You could uh, sort of do what I did with the transfer method or simply try and draw them with observation. And then use your dark mass as an opportunity to play with mingling. Trying your best to keep the tonal value fairly consistent. Um, one of the things that slightly went wrong here is if you can see right on the right hand side of the page, it's almost like there was too much water and as a result that area has become a lighter value. Um, so you don't want that. You want the mingling to happen, um, but you don't want to play it, you don't want to mix up the values too much. Um, so that's just a case of trying to um, judge the amount of water on your brush. And uh, you could play around with, you know, one design. You could try it with lots of different colour combinations. Um, or you could try things like, you know, in this case I'm using the yellow right next to that white. And that is sort of making that, um, that highlight really glow. So I could have got darker towards the edges. I also could have let this whole mingling layer dry and then gone on with a much darker colour over the top. You know, that's an option. Um, so there's lots to experiment with here. But I, I've got a feeling that if you get this thing of the um, simplifying the reference material, I think you're going to find that really, um, you know, good fun to play with. And I say that's why even the chicken motif you know, if that chicken was a little bit more better designed, um, that would have made, you know, a great little page. You could cut those out and uh, do a whole page of minglings just with a animal silhouette, you know. 
But as I say, it's the silhouette, it's these simple statements that actually do so much of the work. And you can see how it's happened here. Just that simple light and dark design. And we've got this, you know, amazing sense of the light and the portrait. So, so I'm hoping this, uh, I know Phil asked me about putting colour into portraits. Hopefully this might give, um, give him some uh, things to play with. I know he's very keen on portraits, but as I say, um, Phil, like uh, a few of us, was watching the um, Sky Portrait Artist of the Week. And um, again, the trouble there is often some of the um, contestants weren't very well lit. So it didn't always lend itself to these sort of strong tonal statements. Um, but yeah, looking at lighting in photography, I'm sorry, in portraiture is, uh, you know, it's a really important thing to become aware of. It can often sort of make or break a subject. Anyway, so there we go. Now, as I say, there's more I could do with that. I could certainly work into it or like my other ones, I could have started to work into the lights. Uh, but it's really important um, to make sure that you always keep the light family and the dark family nice and distinct. And so in this case, I've solved that problem by just having the light family as white paper. As um, soon as you start to go into the whites, you're going to start to muddy the idea. So there we go. That's the final version. So plenty to be getting on with this week. Um, let me know in the comments if there's anything that you're not sure about. And uh, I really look forward to seeing how you get on with it. Thanks a lot. Bye.